Here with NSU coach Mike McConathy. Coach, uh, a big win against Houston Baptist. Scored 106 points, shot 60% from the floor. Kind of had a little bit of time for, for all that to sink in. It just seemed like ball movement created open shots. Open shots were falling, and, uh, and, and some non-open shots failed too. But just kind of reflect on, on that offensive performance from last night. Well, you know, it was a great offensive performance, but it also was one of those where we had made some shots that we hadn't been making. At case in point against Lamar, Lamar made four or five shots during their game that were just like you scratched your head. At Corpus Christi the other night, they made three or four shots that you just kind of scratched your head they, that they made. Well, last night, we get Larry open, Owens with two seconds on the clock. He catches it, shoots it up, and it bounces, 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 fall, falls in. We had uh, John Norvell steps up, makes a three against the clock. C.J. Jones steps up, makes a three against the clock. So you had shots against the clock that were the shots that, I'm not saying that they normally don't, don't make them, but against the clock, we don't normally make those shots. And so I thought that was a big, big thing. And I thought we did a good job of clock management and taking our time and trying to get into some stuff and holding the ball to get to where we, and then we made some, some you know, then we did make some shots. You had Trent Mastner with 20 points. I don't know how many he had in the second half. Uh, my phone was messed up last night, so I couldn't couldn't uh, get to your stat, your stat program you sent me. But um, you know he had not Slim or Jairus Roberson had a great half, and then you know um, you had some some really good plays from a lot of a lot of different areas. So it was a great offensive output. You just hope you didn't use it all in one game. Balance, you know when when this when this team's going at its best, of course it, it's balanced. But you did this with. Chudy only playing six minutes. Brian White only played 15 minutes because of the minutes that CJ and John, the quality minutes that Norvell and Jones played. Um, you know, how big was that to have two of your better scores not even play that much and you still score 106? Uh, it was very, very important for us to be able to, to be able to do that. One, CJ Jones is a very good player and it was great to see him be in a position to where he felt, by his body language, you felt good about his contribution. And you know, and he's had some moments in games, but I just felt like that he he was he was lifted up. And you know, I made this point to him in the locker room. I knew that he was going to be effective yesterday because he was in the gym after practice on his own working. And, and just like right now, there's a player on the other end working on his own as we're filming this. And that's when guys get better in the gym on their own, trying to improve to get better. It's also good if they're with the coach because then they can figure out what they need to do and not do. The confidence level from this team, they're two and two in the conference now. Um, players like Yovan Zelenbaba shot the ball with confidence. Trenton Master shot the ball with confidence. Of course, he does that generally, but it seems like there were more players that, that, that probably were at their highest confidence level of the season on Sunday. I, I don't think there's any doubt about it, but here, I, I'm going to take that back to a film session that took place after the Corpus Christi game in which the guys really listened to what was being said, even though some of it was you know, maybe not what they wanted to hear, but it was reality. And they took it and we went out and we practiced and we built on that. And so that's an example of learning and getting better. Whereas if you're close-minded and you know, that eye in the sky doesn't lie, you know, uh, it, 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 it shows the whole picture. And um, so they did a great job with that. And I attribute our success yesterday partly to that film session and the, their embracing of the points that were being made to them. And then, you know, defensively, given the number of possessions that, that were played and, and the fact that Houston Baptist is a pretty good offense, it felt like defensively you really challenged them and you really forced them into some things that they probably didn't want to do. You know, I really did think that we did a good job defensively. Now, I was a little frustrated in the second half because they stayed at the free throw line because their mentality was we're just going to drive to the bucket. And the way the rules are now, there is nothing you can do about a big, strong, great ball handler of staying in front of him anymore. When I first got to Northwestern, you could put two hands on them, you could mug them, you could do that for about 12 years, and then they started the freedom of movement deal. And I mean, there's just not anything you can go. If a bigger, stronger, faster, is going to is going to get to the bucket if they're skilled enough to do that with the ball. And that's, you know, from picking that up yesterday and seeing that, that's something that with our guys like Larry Owens and Jamari Gregg and 
Chudier Bile and Gat. That's what we need to be doing in attack. And if you look at Nikos, even though he's, he's not big, he's tall and long. I mean, he pretty much can get to the bucket, you know, pretty effectively as well. So those are some things that we need to improve on and get better at ourselves. You have multiple players last night refer back to the situation where two players got ejected. Of course, it's something you never want to have happen, but it was kind of a rallying cry for this bunch. We've talked a lot about how um, you're trying to mix the new and the old and trying to get that team chemistry. Obviously not a situation you'd ever want to have happen, but could this be some kind of a moment that furthers that mission of, of having that, that team together? I, you know, I mean, you don't want that to happen. And, but on the other hand, those things are going to happen in sports. And anybody that's sitting in the stands or watching and thinks that that's not going to happen, it's tough out there. And you've got to hold your ground, but you've got to be smart enough. To, and I, let me back up that. Not smart enough, but under control enough to know how to get your point across without being physical in that situation. Because any um, combative activity now is the term that they use is going to be immediate ejection. And even though there was no sw punches swung or anything, that, that's competitive, acti combative activity, therefore then, and then stepping on the court is definitely a no-no. Yeah. And you just can't do it. So frustration on the part of, of the two young men, uh, but one was in support and then just got caught basically. And the other one was that just kind of stand up. You know, I go back to thinking about myself as a player. You know, you get chucked in the head with an elbow and your first reaction is gonna be, you know, now he didn't get chucked in the head and elbow or he would have been thrown out too. But the, but the gat would have been removed if he would have come back. That's a tough thing there. That's hard, but the rallying cry of, look, we've lost two guys, two men down, we gotta step up and we gotta play, and I know it, what, that's really kind of maybe a bad way to look at it, but two men out. Yeah. So you gotta step up, but it got, gave other guys a chance to step up and do that. And then the question could be, so well, coach, you didn't really utilize two of your big guys as much as you would liked. Well, matchups are everything. And you know, you can't play Larry Owens, Dalen Williams, and uh, Jamari because of matchups, because they went with four small guys and one bigger guy. So that becomes a really, really problem for you and you would like to get more time, but that was an issue there where we didn't probably get as many minutes for Dalen and Robert that we would like to have got, but we, we struggle with the matchups because when Robert went in, he was guarding like a 6'4 guy and that's not, his, 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 uh, not in his wheelhouse at this point. Looking ahead to this coming week, you go to Incarnate Word on Wednesday and to McNeese on Saturday. A lot of road games and conference play early, continue, continuing on the road. Uh, what are going to be some key things to, to take on the road this week? Well, I think that we got to build from what we're doing defensively because if we can hold, if we can hold people, we've got to do a better job of guarding a three-pointer. We're doing a great job of defending a two-pointer, but a poor job of guarding a three-pointer. And, you know, it, to me, it seems like it would be the other way around, but we're giving up much too high a percentage from the three-point line. And I think it's around 36% in conference play, uh, maybe as high as 38%. But, you know, we've got to do a better job of that. Um, and so if defensively, if we can do a good job, then if, as we become more comfortable offensively, and we still have got to get the ball movement like we did in the second half in the first half. Or in the Corpus game down there, we had pretty good movement in the last part of the first half to get back in the game, a great rally. But why aren't we doing that? And I think it goes back to everybody's getting the ball and thinking, I gotta go show what I can do so I can stay in the game, instead of it just moving and being a part of the game. Are you finding that guys are starting to identify their roles and, and play in the roles a little bit better as the season goes along? You know, I'm hopeful of that. I still think we got a long way to go uh, in that area. I think that, you know, you got to know what you can do. And, you know, I think there's one or two that are a little unsure of that still. And it might, they know that, but it's just like anything else. Sometimes it's hard to accept who we are as players. 
you know, and accept this is what I need to do. Um, case in point, a player comes off the floor, and I don't really like to discuss playing time during the middle of a game, and you know, and basically is saying, you know, coach, I can do this, I can do that. Well, you know, I got you. We're gonna we're gonna do this, and I want them to want to be on the floor, but I also want them to understand that I'm sitting over, not eyes in the skies, eye on the bench, and this is what I'm seeing. And so if you're do not doing these certain things, then I need to get somebody in there that can do these. And if you're doing things outside of your game, then, then you know, I don't, you don't need to be on the floor either. So, you know, it, it's kind of a push-pull with coaches and players. And you don't want kids to be in, in work hard and be encouraged that they want to be on the floor. But are you doing something about it elsewhere? Are you wanting to be coached? Just as I mentioned, the young man right now is in the gym. He's wanting to be coached. Therefore, his minutes have gone up. Coach Mike, thank you very much.